going to make you happy. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah. And I think I get grumpy if I don't Yeah? What is it, so what is it about walking that makes you happy? Oh, moving my body feels mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. um, being out in the countryside, seeing things. Now, oh, you know, it's like that old John Denver song about um, you fill up my senses like a night in the forest. Being out in the countryside fills up my senses. Yeah. You know, the things you smell, you see, the new things you hear. We're not quite at the right time of day for the evening chorus of birds, but I think that's probably my favorite is bird song. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, I mean, you're the big fan of meadow flowers and wildflowers and things like that. I am. I'm sure you'll have to make that part of your, your series of videos. Okay. I think one of the first things I noticed was actually wasn't walking, but here's a good example of it. It was actually cycling in France. Uh, that was in the days when I worked in an office. Uh, and I worked in an office, it did have windows, but my desk didn't face them. So I actually spent all day focused on my computer screen, which was two foot in front of my head, or the wall, which was two foot six in front of my head. Uh, I'm going on a holiday in France, and, oh, yes, I'm probably, that's better. Going on holiday in France and cycling and focusing my eyes on a long way away. Oh yeah. That was something that was quite important to me. Mm. Oh. So here we are walking along a piece of the South Downs Way. We're not going to walk along here. Very oh, there's a lady pheasant. Worried that we're near her babies, I suspect. We're going to be walking this seriously tomorrow, but tomorrow we'll have our Nordic walking poles which tend to use your hands up. I love purpley wildflowers and yellow wildflowers, but particularly purpley ones. And up here on uh, Cheesefoot Head, it's a, a chalk down. In fact, the, the whole of the South Downs Way is chalk downland. Uh, you get a particular sort of wildflowers, and this time of the year you get blackberries. Are these, are these blackberries any good? They don't look wonderful, do they? I think this is a very heavily trodden path, so I suspect lots and lots of walkers have been in amongst these blackberries and picked them to death. And Susan and I feel rather snooty about blackberries because we have some wonderful, wonderful thornless blackberries in our back garden. Oh, look, down here. Ooh. Mm, that's a good one. Mm. I had a little tiny bit which I shouldn't have done because I'm on a very strict diet, but hey. I think they're still thorning over your right shoulder. Am I? Yeah, look that way from your own I tell you what, can you hold that? Yeah. Now I can do this. I think I'm going to go home and invent a sort of a long pole that I can <laughs> have something that straps around my neck. And I was watching something on YouTube last night, a guy filming whilst he was cycling, and I think, well, I thought he had the camera attached to his cycling helmet, but every so often you could see him. I don't know whether he took the cycling helmet off and turned it around. Here comes some cyclists, maybe we can ask them. <laughs> Uh, now here's a little bit of history for you, down there in that valley, uh, history if you're from England, history if you're from America, uh, in 1945 the assembled troops ready for D-Day uh, sat on the other side of these trees, you can see down there there's some grass, and just in front of these trees General Eisenhower stood uh, and addressed the troops the night before D-Day. Uh, in those days, Winchester was one of the first towns to have a bypass, a road around the edge to relieve the traffic. And during D-Day, it was a car park for um, the preparation for D-Day. It was completely full of landing craft and all the various things that they were going to take. And uh, so a lot of D-Day meaningfulness here.